Welcome to Science Without the Fiction, Part 3, Mutation Rates. The mutation rate per generation is an observable fact. This is not open for debate. In humans, the rate is anywhere between 63.2 and 238 new mutations per generation. The factors that make the largest impact on mutation inheritance are the age of the parents. The older the parents, the more mutations get passed down to offspring. The mutation rate of 63 comes from a Greenland Trio study of 78 Icelandic parents. They discovered that parental mutations are doubling every 16.5 years, meaning that if you wait till you're 36 before you have your first child, you will have accumulated double the mutations from when you were 20, which have the potential to be passed on to your offspring. This occurs because three-fourths of the human germline mutation are paternal in origin, and their total number increases with a father's age at conception. Regardless, the clock is constant and consistent. Thus, it becomes a great tool for making testable and falsifiable predictions with, and this is exactly what young earth creationist Dr. Nathaniel Jensen has done. He has multiple mitochondrial DNA rate predictions, all of which have been validated. It is logical to conclude then that going back in time, in reverse, you end at a point where there are no mutations. Zero. Which begins with Biblical Adam and Eve. And guess what? The first study results ever done in 1997 confirmed this, and they obtained a time of 6,500 years ago for mitochondrial Eve, using the observable rates. That's only 327 generations ago. And this was secular scientists that discovered this, not creationists. Then, using creationist methods, we assumed that Adam and Eve lived around 300 generations ago. If this was true, then, using 63.2 mutations per generation, the lowest end of the spectrum for evolutionary benefits, the average human then should have 18,000 mutations built up, if this was correct. Well, guess what? Results confirmed 18,900 mutations on average, confirming Y chromosome Adam could not have lived more than 345 generations ago. So again, this compounding mutation rate is not a guess, it's a fact. This is obvious to anyone who studies biology because this is exactly how they create molecular clocks in the first place. So to think mutations are not compounding in all life is just nonsensical and flat out wrong. The inherited mutation accumulation happens to every species on Earth, and it's how we create these clocks. We are able to see the inherited mutational load per generation accumulating in all species we have ever tested. The fact of the matter is, those species may have different rates by which these clocks tick, based on a variety of factors like lifespan, reproduction age, etc. All of the results undermine the evolutionary timeline and theory of old age, as all of the observational rates are an order of magnitude higher than their assumption-based phylogenetic methods. Some are even up to 100 times faster. So, when we count up these de novo germline mutations, the numbers do not look good for evolution in any way. Not only this, many people still are under the impression that these de novo mutations are neutral and have no effect on the system whatsoever, but they couldn't be more wrong. They just don't get noticed by the system, so they are not selected for and removed. Thus, they build up, and we are able to make these clocks. But when you investigate many of these de novo mutations, they cause disease. So they are not neutral. They are near neutral, having small, slightly deleterious effects that the body cannot remove them because it cannot see them. And this is the problem for humans and all life on Earth that we have to deal with.